kind, merciful, compassionate. I would say he's the one that ran to meet the prodigal son. Coming with the stench from the pigs. Hugged him, kissed him. Embraced him. God, what a kind, loving, wonderful, pleasant, beautiful father. Praise God. For Samuel 11, don't go to it. A group of people came to meet the people of Jabesh Gilead. And the people of Jabesh Gilead said, All right, tell us what you want. If you want us to be slaves, we'll be slaves. You are stronger than us. They said, No, we want to remove your eyes. Ah. They said, okay, give us seven days, we'll give you a response. They went to King Saul. See this, and the Bible said the Holy Spirit came upon Saul and said, by this time tomorrow, when the sun is up, in verse 9, you shall get help. I repeat, by this time tomorrow, yes, when the sun is hot, you shall get help. Yes. That was tomorrow is figurative. By this time tomorrow, when the sun is hot, you will get help. The divine will step into your case. He was negotiating for slavery. He said, no, we'll make you head. You will get help. You will get, this month of September, you will get help. You will get help. You will get help in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. All right. Um, the last three Sundays, I've been doing a teaching on faith and I was taking you through the procedures by which we looked at Mark 11. And uh, we said the confession is based on whatever agreement you've made with God in that prayer closet. And once God has heard you and granted you leave that the petition is granted, everything now is in your court. And we said you can vary your confession so long as it does not conflict with your agreement with God. We gave example when they told Mary she will have a son and his name shall be called Jesus. When she left that closet, she didn't go about saying, I will have a son. I have a son. She said, my soul does rejoice in God. My spirit, my soul does magnify the Lord. My spirit has rejoiced in God and maker. From henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. Automatically, a confession has aligned with whatever the angel told her. But many people, out of lack of wisdom, will go and say, I have a son. And they say, where is the son? Then, out of wisdom, they say, he has arrived. Have you given birth? Then they create more confusion than solution. So we said, Satan will bring everything at you to change your confession, to conflict and be against what you agreed with God. And that's where you can stop it. And if you cannot stop it, that's the end. It's going to come to pass. And we said faith alone without works is dead. Establish that agreement and your confession with an act of faith, which could be a, an action, a seed, something tangible that you can refer to. And we say once that is done, then it is sealed. It cannot be reversed. You know, they tell you, if you are sending money to somebody <coughs> and you're on your application, then you say make transfer 5,000. Once you put your pin and you press send, you can't reverse it. You know that. 
That's what the seed is. Once you have sent the seed and the divine collects your seed, is sent, it cannot be reversed. There's nothing you can do. If the money goes, you're going to call the person. There is no, they are yet to do the application to reverse it, except the fraudulent ones. I don't know whether that one exists. That is what the seed is when the divine accepts it in lieu of his agreement with you and your confession. Now, when that is done, what now happens during the waiting game? Because there's a waiting game, right? Okay, you've sown the seed, you're confessing, it's sealed. And God tells you it is done, it cannot be reversed. And one month, two months is going, nothing seems to be happening. Of course, Satan throws one or two things, you give him another variation of confession, it doesn't stop it, right? So what happens? Truly, now you are in faith. What happens? One of the things they tell us, don't teach a man discipline without teaching him, without giving him a vision. You tell a man, don't eat for seven days. By the second or third day, you don't tell him the reason why he should eat. And he passes where there is delicacies and there is uh, and all this uh, and he knows, you see, I remember one day I went to take a pastor out for lunch. He said, Pastor, okay, I'm going for lunch with you. I said, because I'm fasting, but God didn't tell me to fast. He said, I chose this fast, and I've chosen by myself to cancel. Wait there. No, it wasn't he was fasting. He said, since I'm the one that started the fast, I'm the one that we want end the fast. And as you have spoken, I've ended the fast. Now he opened the door, let's go. There's no, if I said, if I said the fast, as if you have started the fasting, and Lord said, when you finish this fast, I'm going to multiply your ministry by a thousandfold. That lunch won't, it won't answer you. It won't answer you. If you like, take him to uh, where's the biggest place they eat in the world. It won't answer you. He won't answer you for that joy that I said before him. He will not answer you. So, what then is the benefit? Now you are in faith. And you are waiting for the physical manifestation. What then? Because if there is nothing, after a while, you might tend to cast off strength. And so there are benefits for it. Number one. When you walk by faith, when you are in faith, when you are waiting on the Lord for the physical manifestation by faith, there are certain benefits that you qualify for pending the physical manifestation. Second Peter, sorry, first Peter. Chapter 1, First Peter chapter 1, verse 5. Sorry. I know the scripture says we are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be made revealed in these last days. Is that what it says? Say so we are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last days. So while you are waiting on God for the physical manifestation, you see all those pestilences Death, um, darkness, earthquake, COVID, uh, famine, tremor, perplexity. Mention them. You are immune from them. They can't touch you. They can't touch you. <laughs> he says, we are kept 
by the power of God. So once you activate and the Lord seals it, you seal it by an act of faith and the Lord receives it until that thing is made manifest, nothing can touch your life. You can't die. You cannot die. Did you hear me? Death runs from you. In Luke 2, I read from verse 25. Sorry, I don't know what's wrong with this Bible. Look to, I'll read from verse 25. And it says, Behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. The same man was just devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. The Holy Ghost was upon him. It was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost. He should not see death before he had seen the Lord Jesus. People think this is specific to him. Let me explain something which you need to understand about the scripture. If God tells a Samuel that no word of your mouth, that's what God told him, will fall to the ground. Now, it is a prototype of a part of the scripture. God, let me explain. God is not a respecter of persons. He has no favorites. He's a respecter of processes, all right? So if he says that no word of your mouth will fall to the ground, then there are places you can go to in the scripture and find out what you can do that will make no word of your mouth fall to the ground. If God says you will live long, and you will live well. He has not said it to him because he is his favorite. He has said it because the man has done something that qualifies him to say it. However, when he said the kingdom of God suffered violence, and the violence taken by force, meaning, and in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 17, he says, no word of the scriptures of any private interpretation, meaning, <clears throat> if God says to somebody, you will never lack till you die. And I told that person, you can search in the scripture something you two you can do that will make you never lack. He is not the owner of that scripture. No word of the scripture is of any private type. Nobody has full monopoly of any scripture. Nobody. It is open. That's why they say the kingdom of God from the days of John the Baptist is suffering violence and the violence taken by force. Meaning, before when they told Abraham, they told Isaac, they told Jacob, prior to John the Baptist, after John the Baptist, they don't need to tell you. You can claim what they told Abraham based on what the scripture says. You don't need to wait for God to come and tell you. Like he said to um, Jacob, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Never. Then you need to find out in the scripture. What do they do? And the Bible says, and they went preaching the word, the Lord walking with them. So all I need is to be saying the mind of God. The Lord will be walking with me and be with me. I don't need to wait for him to come and tell me that. I only need to find out in the scripture what I need to do for me to qualify for that. And once I do it automatically, as he said to that person, he will do to me. So when he says of Simeon, he shall not taste death until he has seen the Lord Jesus. Why? He was waiting by faith for the emergence of Jesus. He was in faith, praying, waiting for the consolation, expecting Jesus. So they told him, since you are in faith, expecting Jesus to come, then death, famine, kidnapping, let me say, if you're in faith and you walk, I didn't say walk, if you walk into kidnappers, they won't see you. They won't see you. They won't see you. They won't see you. Mm. You just walk past them and you say, were well, they blind? You say, no. They can't see you. The power of God will shield you. God said, we are kept by what? The 
power of God, it will shield you. That's one of the benefits you need to understand. Hmm. So you're not just waiting. A lot of stuffs, quite a lot is going on. That's number one. Number two, that time you're waiting. If the blast of the trumpet sounds, you will lift. <laughs> um, you know the scripture in Luke 18? Luke 18, from verse 1. And he spake a parable to them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Saying there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city which came to him saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he will not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God nor regard man, because this widow troubled me, I will avenge her, lest by continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, Shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night, though he be along with them? I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man come, shall he find faith. So, when he comes, he's looking for faith. When he's coming, he's looking for, people say, well, I'm waiting for rapture. <laughs> I look and I laugh. You're waiting for rapture, and you are in unbelief. You are nice. You are kind. You are morally good, but you are in unbelief. When the trumpet sounds, you will not leave. The sound responds to faith, not niceness. It's like a spirit of death. Spirit of death doesn't know niceness. Do you know how many nice people have died young? He care. What concerns him with niceness? He doesn't care about wickedness. If a man is oppressing you, have you seen people oppressing you? And you pray they die and they live long. Have you noticed they don't die? Because the spirit of death, niceness and wickedness is not part of his law of oppression. He has his law, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. The Bible says, who will see life and live long? Let him keep his mouth from speaking God. The moment you say something wrong that does not align with what God has said about somebody, you activate death over your life instantly. Straight. There's no instant. That doesn't mean you die immediately because when death comes, there are factors. If you have been merciful, God can decide to show you merciful. Mercy. And say, hold on. Hmm. Don't take him here. That's why sometimes you have a dream, somebody died, and it takes five years before they die. Why? When you had the dream, they had activated death. But death had been following them for five years. But they didn't have the opportunity until what God used to show them mercy expired. Then he took them out. But it's not... A, he said, if you can't keep your mouth, you lose your life. And many Christians... That's a sentiment area. Let me not even go there. He that keeps his mouth keeps his life. Not that he that is nice. <laughs> Would they think? If you heard that before, say, Oh Lord, me say kafunyori. Death doesn't have time for that. Me orobi seniori. Death has no business with that. Me oroko molo monkey te mada. What's the business of death with that? It's coming to take your child, and it's not his business. Whether you roll a bit or not to somebody, it's a morality state that people use and death still inflicts damage because they don't know the law of sin and death. Very soon, maybe we need to visit that doctrine. Too many people are just dying everywhere and they don't understand. I've seen it. Our law of bar. Me roti kelo me mada. Yo ni kelo me roti eko mada. Abi. Say I didn't. I didn't wish anybody evil. That doesn't mean a thousand people are not wishing you evil. Bible says forty people took an oath that they must kill Paul, otherwise they will not eat. Was it thinking of people and about killing? No, no, it doesn't matter. No, you don't even need to offend anybody. You just, you don't, you don't even need to be nice. Just leave. By your living, you are angry. You are getting some people angry. Just living. <laughs> you walk the look and get somebody an agent of darkness angry. Just ordinary walk. Hmm. All right. We shall see. 
and we shall see. <laughs> Jesus. Do you know that even blessing somebody, bless me with 5,000. Hey, me. Ah. Hey, me, 5,000. And all you have is 10, no? <laughs> It's a spirit. They call it the angel. He said that night the angel of God passed. Let your daughter in. To pass near you. Kaya. He said he has given you what? Beauty for what? The oil of joy for what? And the garment of praise for what? The spirit of heaviness. That you might be called the planting of the Lord, the trees of righteousness. To what? To glorify God. They will come and ask about the she. You know, Paul said, there's a mark on him. All this about the mark. Say, let no man trouble me. There was a mark on Cain that they shouldn't kill him. There are marks when dead sees he flees. It's on you in Jesus' name. It is on you in Jesus' name. You know. There are people who are sick that doctors don't understand why they are alive. And there are people who are not sick and they have kaput. Let's leave that. So we said, if you are in faith, while waiting, and the rapture, the trumpet sounds in Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. I'll read verse 5. By faith, Enoch. It takes faith. So that means without faith, you can't lift. You see, everything about God is faith. He says, he that will ask God, whether for wisdom or for car or for house rent, or for um, husband, or for, or for a wife, or for capital. So let him ask in faith, not doubting. For he that doubts is like the wave of the sea, tossed to and fro. Let not that man contemplate that he shall get anything from God. So it takes faith to rapture. So you must be in faith to rapture. Because only faith can respond to that blast. And they lift you up. Some person told me, said I had a dream. He said, tell me your dream. He said, there was a blast of the trumpet. And I saw everybody in the gracious church, they lifted up. You know, it's not that they lifted up, sorry. People are lifting up. I said, did you lift? He said, I went up small. Then I fell to the ground. I couldn't lift. Then I said, oh, let me run to the great church then. Someone said, but oh, they've all gone. So you all go with the rapture in Jesus' name. I don't intend to leave anybody behind, actually. You get it. Eh? We're all going together. But well, you must be good guys. Eh? You have to be good guys. You get it. Eh? Twally, right? When I, when, when I actually move in that cloud and I see Jesus, my baby is shaking. Ah, uh ah. -uh. You know? <laughs> Let me tell you something about God. Car! Even the church does not know God. Do you know that if you land in that cloud, say, Kai! Bobo Meti you. You know the way he's going to respond to you. He will reprimand you for it. He's going to say, Ah, we no wa. Ah, we will go wa, but say why. Praise God. You think he'll be speaking quiz English when you tell him to Baba me ah eti waju? You think he's going to say you are um maybe if it's Tatoi gets there now? No, sorry. When it's Tatoi gets there now, say so, my Jesus God, you just too much. Say you are very very much. <laughs> That's why I say. But me, I said twa ah shake Baba me to Baba me oh. Then he, he will say more. He say he will say. Praise God. And what did Bobby say? Came on, Bobby. What do you want you? Try fight. Jesus, you do not go with you. You do not go. 
I, I, if you're not careful, if uh, someone like who can, if they, they, when they get there, I, I, I don't want to mention conservative people. They say, ah, no cooker, I show this Jesus. Because <laughs> they believe everything prim and proper. You, you have an idea of the people I'm talking about. They are prim, they are proper, they are right. There's no, even they tell you, kill you, go, no cooker, you are mean, behave. The pilot will go say that. Oh, Jesus. Kaya no to. Yet, power. Kaya. Heaven and earth at his disposal in that place. Yet. That's why they call him the servant king. And it will relate with you the way you understand it. It's going to relate with you. You get it. And because we are faith people, it's going to relate with us. You, you know, we won't really be doing trialing when we get to heaven. By the time we, we're going for rapture, Ire would have matured more. So she would say, Baba, I'm your old. No, she wouldn't do that again. She would, she would have changed a bit, you know. And I have a feeling that book will be, you know, trying to um, affecting her so much that when Ire to guess there, I say, God, Jesus, oh, God, you're welcome. Thank you, sir. You know, very, you know. <laughs> But Jesus said, "Boy, you're a walking bush. You're going to be walking on coals here to be chilly. But it will be great. We all make it. Not just rapture. You will make it here. You will make it here. You will make it here. In the name of Je- September. No, was it September? January 2000. Is it 10th? I'm trying to remember the date when he said, "You have been commissioned by God." To end poverty in the continent of Africa. That's an apostolic order. That's an apostolic order. So you can't be ready. Never, never, never. In fact, from today, any of your resources, any of the things of peace that belong to your peace that is held. You know, there was a man when the husband died and um, the wife, the brother was in charge of the man's farm 20, about 20 acres so he came to the house and he said to the woman, I was there, it was a meeting he said your husband's farm 20 acres is in my care this is what we planted on it and this is the harvest we are going having and I said because she told me that if that man sits on that farm there's nothing we can do because it's in the village. She's in Lagos. I said, sir, as you're helping her tend the farm, and you know, would you at least 10% keep for yourself, oh, Lord, what about me? Those were his words. Oh, let do marry Jesus, oh, Nije, and you found me before my time. So I didn't tell you. I said, what happened? I said, in the night, a man appeared to be wearing white with a sword. The sword was fire. He said, if you take one thing that belongs to that woman, I will kill you and I will wipe out your lineage. He said, he said it to him twice. He said, if you touch one thing that belongs to that widow, he said, ah, he said the sword. He said, sword, there ain't none. So we're white. Only I will kill you and wipe out your lineage. He said, that's why I'm on earth. And he woke up. He said, pastor, am I a me? When he said that, after I told her, I said, <laughs> let God's warring angels be set out Amen. and wage war Amen. against anyone Amen. who is sitting on what belongs to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I command them to release it Amen. because you have need of it. Jesus said, untie it and bring it. If any man challenge, tell them the Lord has need of it. You have need of it. And the Lord has need of it with you in the name of Jesus. What if they refuse that angel will slaughter them? And will appear to their children and say, the reason we killed your father is because of this. Now take this and go and give it to so, so, and so. I retrieve back every good that is meant for your peace according to the strength of this commission. And the workings of this grace, I retrieve it now. And I put it back into your bands. I place it in your hands. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. <laughs> so we said, by faith, Enoch was raptured. So once you are in faith and waiting, it's not a dull moment. A lot is going on. If the rapture sounds, you are qualified to go. If death comes, just go and sleep. It will what? Pass over. Pestilence. Earthquakes. If you're in an earthquake zone and in the center of the earthquake and it sounds, you will walk out alive without a scratch because you are kept by the power of God through faith. Amen. Amen. What other benefits do you enjoy? Number one, in Romans chapter one, that's the only way you can know God. A lot of people want to know God. Sorry, Romans 11, sorry. Romans 11? No, it's Romans 1. Romans 1, sorry. Romans 1, 16 to 17. I'll go back to Romans 11 later. Romans 1, 16 to 17 says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believeth. Oh, I can change that salvation. It is the power of God to possession. That means anything. Anything that will make you whole and move forward in life. So that gospel can produce the power to attain it. Amen? Amen. To everyone that believe it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. So, once you operate and you are in faith, God will begin to reveal himself to you. God can never, never reveal himself. People have, there's a difference between people studying God and people knowing God. It's not the same. People study God and people know God. For example, you can know what God is thinking. You can have an idea if he's angry. You can have an idea if he's happy. I've seen people very, very, very nice. And I knew God is angry with this person. And I knew trouble was coming. It wasn't long before the person died. I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. I knew because they got God angry. And they don't know what gets God angry. And he's different from man. His ways are different. His thought pattern. And it's little, little, little things that gets him angry. The big things you're looking at, it's not what gets him angry. Little, little. What did Miriam do to Moses? Just to question him, be, uh -uh. should you have married an Ethiopian? God said, for that, you are doomed. I'm going to deal with you. Just for that alone. He got God angry. God got angry, little, tiny. And sometimes it looks as if God is unjust. And David goes to eat the showbread. There's no lawful for him to eat. And God pronounces his blessings on him. And somebody else takes the showbread and eats. God says, no, for that you will not leave. Eli's sons defile the women, steal God's offering. God judged his lineage. Samuel's sons defile the offering, steal God's offering. God kept quiet. He didn't look there as if he didn't see it. <coughs> he says, by faith is the nature of God revealed. From faith so once you are there, God starts visiting you and starts, not visit, appear. Instantly, you begin, you'll be wondering, ah, how did I know God doesn't like this? How do I know this is what God thinks about this? You start picking the spirit of God's letters. You start knowing why God says something. Automatically, your understanding opens. And because God cannot be studied, God cannot be learned. He can only be revealed. And he will only reveal himself to you from faith to faith. So automatically, you start growing in the knowledge of God. Let's look at a few scriptures. Romans 11, 33. All the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom 
and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. I remember, <laughs> God, it sounds strange. Oh, Jesus. This lady was going through a form of oppression, demonic oppression, and abuse, all sorts. I can't recount about seven things she was going through. And she said she has gone for deliverance and deliverance, and nothing has worked. She asked me, what do I do? I said, leave your friend's place and go to your father's house. She said, my father's rent has expired and they're about to throw his things on the street. I said, let them throw his things with yours on the street. So she went and three days later, they were on the street. She said, I'm on the street. I said, it's okay. Does that make sense? She said, when they threw the things on the street, and I spent the night with my father on the street. He said it was like a mask that they removed from my face. He said, I'd carried an ailment for 12 years. It vanished. He said, all the um, sex in the sleep stopped. All the eating in the dream stopped. Does that make sense? How did I know? By the wisdom of God through Faith of interacting and knowing God. That's how I know. They don't teach it. They don't teach it. It's not in the Bible. <laughs> they don't teach it. <laughs> she said, all the men that used to molest me, so when they looked at me, they startled, and none of them could move near me again. He said, Pastor, he said, it's as if they use jars. They just tell me, go and lie down and remove your. He said, I remove your sieve. A robot was operating. He said, I looked at one. I said, what do you want to say? He said, nothing, my use ma for me. He said, for the first time, I wasn't delivered. I was set free. Did that make sense? It's called. They don't teach it in Bible school. And your Jews don't know them. <laughs> it comes from faith to faith. God revealing himself and his wisdom to you. That's one out of many. So it says the riches, the depths, the wisdom, the knowledge of God, they are unsearchable, but they can be revealed from faith to faith. So once you take that step, these things start coming. Everything about you begins to change. And I notice when I do this, people ask me, they say, you look different. You begin to glow. Car. You begin to glow. You know, some people look dull. They look pale. It's, it's unbelief, actually. The glow is not powder. Neither is it um, cosmetics. It's the anointing and the power coming from faith to faith. I give you some live experiences where I've been and I didn't know that the three people sitting in the place I entered were some of the most powerful herbalists in Yoruba land. And I entered Glowing and they stood up and prostrated. Ah, I'm Ah, I didn't know until later. They told me, You don't know who those men are. They mentioned the family. They pro you prostrate to you, you dare. If I get angry with them, they are doomed. I say, Kiss the soul, lest he get angry. And you what? Perish in the way. I must not be angry. Even for no cause. I just don't like your faces. They're in trouble. <laughs> they know what they were doing. I said, no. I know. I I know. I I know. I know. I I I don't understand. Until later, I said, I'm Baba. Of uh, 
They mentioned it. <clears throat> First Corinthians 15, 34. It says, if you don't know God, because you don't have faith, the Bible says shame on that person. See what the Bible calls shame. First Corinthians 15. So it's not just that I'm waiting. There's a lot going on. 15 verse 34. I wait to righteousness, sin on some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. And you can't have the knowledge of God except by faith. So whoever is not walking by faith actually is a reprobate in the Christian um, uh, walk. It's like a specimen of shame. That's what the Bible says. And most Christians are not being taught faith. The Bible says God dwells in darkness. That means mysteries. Darkness means you can't decode him. Thick darkness. Psalm 97 verse 2. No once I was telling God, I said, God, this way you are going is dangerous so because you know I can do this and do this and do this to you. It will be pleasant. So of course I know. He has super wisdom. <laughs> so if whatever you want to do, he still has the super wisdom. If you like, build tower to heaven. He will just change the language. Everything ends there. If you like... Say you are, he knows what to do. But like the Jew of Redeem said once, when they told him, this man, pastor, abused you and said this. What do you have to say about it? He said, I'm like a man in a ring with a son, with a son. If I beat him, they say, useless old man. He's beating his son. He's not ashamed. If he beats me, say, look at this old man. Small boy is beating him. Say, either way, he wins. <laughs> so either way, we win when it comes to us and God. We win. I'll leave there. I've mentioned three things now, right? One will help you know God. And Deuteronomy 29, 29 says, the secret things belong to God. And whatever God reveals to you is yours forever and to your children and your children's children's children. So I can decide to take acts of faith and know a hundred things of God and pass about 90 of them to the children and say, this is what you need to know of God. Put this to practice this way. Do this and do this. If you see this, do this. If you see this, do this. And I'm giving them inheritances. I'm giving them inheritances. They will make it more than give them houses. You know that. In First Timothy chapter 4, I'll close with this. Closing a bit earlier, right? First Timothy chapter 4. I read verse 8. Bodily exercise profits little. But godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of life, of the life that now is and of that which is to come. What's God saying there? Anytime you take an act of faith, anytime you do exercises, if you do exercises, the profit of your exercise is that you lose some weight and you are fitter and you are healthier. Right? Now, when you've done that exercise and you don't do any exercise another one, two, three months and you eat in an uncontrolled manner, you lose all that profit. You add weight again, and you're not as fit as you ought to be and might not be as healthy as you should be, right? That's why it says bodily exercise profits. That's what little means temporarily. That means to maintain that fitness, you need to continue to exercise yourself regularly. But the Bible says if you exercise your faith once, even if you don't do it again forever, it gives you an eternal reward. So it's comparing exercising your faith to your body and says, why don't you exercise your faith? Because if you can exercise it once, 
and get it right. You get a reward that you can never lose forever and ever. But if you exercise your body and you get it right, and you don't exercise your body again, that profit is lost. So it says, rather, exercise your faith. Because the profit can never be lost. That's why when you see in Hebrews 11, after they have Isaac, and Abraham had Isaac, what happened? He had Keturah, he had six children, and he was having children all over. But the profit from Isaac remains till today. It cannot be reversed. After having those cockubines. If you look at, uh, sorry, that's Abraham. If you look at all the men of faith, whatever they did that brought them eternal reward is forever. It cannot be reversed. But whatever you do in bodily exercise can be reversed. So the Bible suggests to you opt for spiritual exercising of your faith if you don't have an option to exercise in your body. Because it's an eternal, permanent reward that cannot be lost. That's what that scripture means. You know, so many scriptures sound somehow. Sounds like body exercise profit. Even they use it to do exercise in gym. You know, they read it. Body exercise profit a little. Even the Bible recommends that we should exercise our body. Blah, 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 blah. They use it. <laughs> but it's actually meant to be used to encourage people to exercise their faith. Okay? Praise God. So, by Taking that step of faith of what we just said, you automatically have rewards in heaven. And not only that, if you see it through and have the result, you have a throne in heaven. Not everybody will have thrones in heaven. I remember a friend of mine said he had a dream, he saw paradise. And there were many churches with pastors. Say so each of the pastors was staying in front of the uh, congregation, waiting for the Lord to give an account. Say so they were standing. <laughs> I said, you didn't see me? They said, no. I said, you saw well. You can never see me, and you will never see me there in Jesus' name. Say so then he went to the holy city. He said there, it was like a garden. He saw Jesus seated. He saw Paul. He saw James. He saw Abraham. He saw Peter. He saw the apostles. They were there. I said, did you see me? He said, no, I didn't see. I said, well, you, you can't see me yet because I'm still on earth. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. But if we were to see you ahead, you would have seen my chair there. That's where I'm going to be. And that's where all the members of Gracious Church are going to be. Amen. And every person that's a partaker of this grace, that's where they're going to be. Actually, God spoke to me. He said, some people have vision to make heaven. So I didn't give you that vision. I gave you a vision to bring them to the holy city. He said, if any member under you goes to paradise, say, you have failed. God. He said, if they go to paradise, you are better have an account. And I'm ready because if they go to paradise, I said, Lord, I told so, 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 and so to do this. They were rude. They didn't answer me. They were questioned. You know, I have to give account. And God will ask, why did so, so, and so go to paradise? Why did they make the holy city? I, will, I must render before God an account. Are you getting it? My prayer is I won't have to come and defend myself while you went to paradise. That's my prayer for you. That's why any person that dies under this grace, their bodies must be glowing like light. It's not ordinary body. If you look at the corpse, it can blind your eyes if you're not careful. From the glow that will be shining and emitting from the skin of that person. That's the holy city candidate. That's why Stephen, when he was to go, he said, I saw the Lord. His face shone like light, like that of an angel. He's going to the holy city. He's not going to paradise. You see, some people say, I, I've been dreaming. I saw people singing. I use paradise. They don't hear singing in the holy city. If he's singing, it's paradise. That's general, heaven. And they're happy. Came on board on calling Jesus. God forbid, that's not my portion. That's paradise. You can't hear singing in the holy city. What you hear is sharing the word. Kaya. Say, I was going to play on board on share. Well, yeah, you got it. <laughs> if you see Paul in paradise, in, in, in the holy city, he's sharing. With Abraham, they're discussing. What are they discussing? The Lord. When you see people in paradise, what are they doing? They're singing. 
O ti se o. Ah! Jesus, kaya motolo kozanti. Kiyama. You remember, somebody was about to die. And the Lord said, you have to go to that house to see somebody. And I went to the house. I said, I thought I came to see you. I came to see your mother. I said, mommy, the Lord said you should sow sacrificia to me. Immediately. It wasn't past 24 hours. She went with me. She brought the seed. Three days later, she died. I said, God, how can someone sow and die? God said, <laughs> go back and ask. So I went to the daughter. I said, what happened? He said, you know, my mother, I can't remember the month, hated June. June, hated June. I said, why? He said, that's the month my father drove out of the house. And she hated my father with all hatred and passion and never forgave him. She cursed him every day. So if she had died that way with unforgiveness, she would have gone to hell. So, but she didn't ask for forgiveness. The woman with the alabasca box didn't ask for forgiveness. She gave her all. And Jesus said her sins, which are many, are wiped off. God said by that seed, I wiped off all her sins. I restored her to a state of grace. Listen. And I put her. He said, you'll be shocked when you get to the holy city. You'll find her on, you know, that woman, they gave her the gospel. I've deviated from what I was preaching. They gave that woman. He said, I went to prepare for death. He said, so, your duty is to make sure they live long and well. And when they're about to die, go and prepare them for death so that they can receive them with glory and escort from earth to heaven with a mighty escort and chariots. And they will enter triumphant as overcomers so that they can have their full reward. And I will reckon all what they have done by that seed. I will reckon it that they did it on earth and reward them fully. He said, for the first time, my mother had peace. Never had peace since she left my father. For the first time, she prayed for my father. Jesus. For the first time, we saw our mother different after she sowed that seed. Now I can say she died without that seed. Say it's hellfire. Oh, for you can't even know. How? All your sins are, 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 are hell back. Was when I heard that you heard it, I said, glory be to God said, not only that, because naturally I know that she's a good woman. She's just hurt. said, I made sure not only did she make it, she made the holy city. And you'll be shocked at all these people fasting 21 days, 70 days. When they get there, they'll be subservient to her. Because she, like the woman, she the woman about that bus. They said, whenever this gospel is preached, they give her oath. We don't know what they're giving to this one. They may say, whoever comes, she's the one to give them water to receive. There's something she's going to be doing as they come. They say, ah, mommy, how do you, how, we that, we are speaking in tongues. We that, uh, we are binding demons. They are sending us to paradise. You, that you are in unforgiveness last minute, you claim, how did you make it say? Now so we see her. Now so we see her. That's what faith does. And then she looks like she's sleeping. How can a woman wake up and the first thing she does is to curse the man? Said, is it month of June? Say, yes, say that June could need that for June. Ah, ah, bitterness. And she was going to church. <laughs> Glory. That's why when you grow old, what do I mean old? The standard age here is supposed to be 92. And you're about to go. Then we then go and turn sorrow. Nipa, um, Jesus. We then go both boys, Paul and Peter, come down. The close. Then you now share deep things from the world. I say you are going to Holy City. And I was say, hey, Mumbori, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Let's <laughs> go to paradise. <laughs> Multitude with palms in their hand. When you are going, you'll be decked with robes of righteousness, glowing. Those ones were wearing garments of salvation. Garments. You know, China, garment. Those of you who buy clothes, you know, garment. You know, you sew garment for, uh, what do you use garment for? Eh? To sleep, Abby. Night dress. It's poor people. Correct people don't use garment for night dress. To, for, li eh, eh, for lining. You see that lining dress, that's what they are wearing in heaven. Jesus. But there's no see through there, Shah. Praise God, if you think it will be see through. 
Let us sit through there. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And um, it also means, if, also means that you're going to finish your course with joy. Amen. It almost means you will keep the faith. Amen. It also means you have the crown of righteousness. Amen. You know, 2 Timothy 4, 7, Paul said, I've kept the faith, I've finished the race. I fought the good fight, I've kept the fish, I've finished the race. Now it's kept for me the crown of righteousness. They don't give crowns to people in paradise. They wear gowns and hold um, palms and palms. You get it? They wear palms. They don't wear robes. They're dog keepers. You know, <laughs> it's good you're a dog keeper here. So the way you get to heaven, you'll be a dog keeper. Someone like God, you know, I can't be a dog keeper in heaven. Once you're a dog keeper, you can't be a dog keeper. All right. So they are dog keepers. They are, um, uh, uh, they, 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 but they sing more. But he said, when I got to that garden, he said they were discussing with the Lord. He said, you could hear the singing in paradise going on. They were discussing. Paul was asking the Lord Jesus questions. He will answer them. Abraham will ask him. Jesus was with them. Then after he said, Jesus said, hold on, my father sends for me. I must go and attend to my father. Then he went. And they continued discussion among themselves. Now I want to ask you a honest question. Mr. Buki, Abraham sits. Paul sits. James sits. John sits. I sit. Then they now bring somebody who say, if you wear with one, you will die and go to hell. How do we want to discuss there? How? Eh? It can't work. Am I communicating? It can't work. You get it? Look at the question Jesus is asking lawyers. So which is the greatest commandment? To love God. Uh, he said, uh, ask which is the greatest. Then the lawyer said, he said, to love God with all your heart, with all your mind, and to all your soul, and to love your neighbor as yourself is better than all the burnt offerings put together. The Lord looked at you and said, he didn't say you are there. He said you are getting close. That means that it's not a place for dollars. Say so you are getting close to where we are going to sit. And the guy said, when I saw that, they had barbecue fish and it's scriptural. Because Jesus ate fish in the resurrected body. Said they had chips. They had fruits. Why the ones in paradise, they blow so that they don't be the, to quell the hunger. <laughs> said they were eating. Said they finished eating. The angels came to pack their food. And he was not allowed to stay there. He didn't let him stay there. It's not for everybody. Second two walk together. I said, they, they agreed. There are certain doctrines. You can't be in the holy city. Because you can't have an intellectual sound discussion with the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't see from the way he sees. As the heavens are from the earth, so are his ways from our ways. And you can't see it. You can't see it. Praise God. That's why they call this place the assembly of the wise. You were there. The man never met me. So this is your assembly, the assembly of the wise. You must be able to sit with the Lord and interact wisely with him and ask him questions. And when he asks you, say, hmm, our voice gracious here, eh? <laughs> Intelligent. You talk to the Lord. He will say, yeah, this is, these are my own. These are, these are my loins. You know, the foolish son, they say is the mother. Abi, why the wise one? They say, if I'm mommy, Lele, I'm my man, Lele, I'm Lele, I'm Laka, I'm my man, I'm Mote, Jesus said, this one's my own, Kai. Praise God. And it's an all rounder. You can't have that and live in penury. You can't have that and live in sickness. You can't have that and live from hand to mouth. You can't have that and exist rather than live. You can't have that and not fulfill purpose. You can't have that and not be great in life. So why I'm talking to the conglomerate of gods, the great ones, the mighty ones on the face of the earth, where there is exceeding joy, great, mighty, great joy. Father, we thank you. Highly successful. I salute you. If you're the one, say amen. Say, that's me. Full of wisdom. Great joy. Kalozumakada. In good and divine health. Now, what's, where? Where 
in the bones. Do you know that arthritis is called vexation of bones? Do you know what it means to vex? Arthritis is called vexation of the bones. Check it, it's in, it's in Psalms and Proverbs. It's where the bones are vexed. And if you check the scripture, it said it was vexed by a demon. And they say, healing is children's bread. Deliverance is for children, it's not for sons. Sons don't get delivered because they cannot be bound. So when you walk in such a realm, you can't eat. Jesus, I have to close. What? I try what? Bulletin board. Jesus. It's not about weight. Yes, you may need to drop weight, but it's not about weight. Nonsense. It's called vexation of the bones. Right? Go and check the Bible very well. Here! Here! It will not happen. Maybe out there, not here. It's not going to happen. Because there's a conglomerate of sons. And healing is for children, not sons. Meaning, divine health is for sons. Praise God. 